now. You must be very careful, Margaret. It's the girl. Witness the birth. Bad things will start to happen. Evil things. Of evil. It's all for you. No, no, don't. The first omen. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of what? It's the most terrifying. 666 is the mark of the devil. Movie of the year. Real story. Real story. The first omen. Rated R. Under 17, not a minute without parent. Now playing only in theaters. This is Optimal Relationships Daily, episode 2128. Seven Things You Should Stop Apologizing For. By Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another one of our Sunday bonus episodes. I'm Greg Audino, and if you don't know, each week on Sunday we air two episodes. One is our normal ORD format. And in the other, we actually share previous audio from another show on our network, so you can see all that we have to offer. And today's comes from our main show, which follows the same format, but is focused on overall personal development, called Optimal Living Daily. So with that, here is Justin, the narrator over there, with his narration and his commentary, as we optimize your life. Seven Things You Should Stop Apologizing For by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. We don't always mean it when we apologize. Sometimes it's just cultural and natural. My goal here is to release you from unnecessary guilt in your life. I'm guilty of this guilt as well. We all do it, but we don't need to. So let's go over some stuff we shouldn't be apologizing for. Number one, your house. Sorry my house is such a mess. Sometimes I like to say, now it's time for the obligatory apology for the condition my house is in when people come over. It lightens the mood and breaks the ice, but it also shows that I don't really feel the need to apologize for it. We have five kids. Our house isn't always pristine. Your house is your house, not your guests. So there's no reason to apologize. We all like to do the mandatory cleanup before people come over. And then we wonder why our house isn't always in this cleaned up condition. It doesn't have to be. We should keep clean houses because it boosts our mood and we know where things are when we stay organized. But if there are clothes on the couch or you forgot to wipe off the counters, no apology is necessary. Number two, your car. Sorry, my car is such a mess or sorry, my car is older. Seems like every time I get in someone's car, they say, sorry, it's so messy. First off, I don't care and nobody cares. Second, it's almost never the disaster they seem to think it is. A lot of us practically live in our cars, and if someone else's car is messier than yours, there's no problem. They're still giving you a ride, so that's something to be thankful for. I've also noticed a trend of people apologizing for having an older car. I typically use this as a segue into a conversation about how most millionaires drive older cars. There are typically Two types of people when it comes to cars, those who understand cars keep a lot of people poor and those who are poor because of their car. I applaud the first group, yet these are the people who apologize. There's no standard you have to live up to. Stop apologizing for the condition of your vehicle. Number three, your children. Sorry, my kids are so hyper, messy, loud, etc. This is one of my favorites. Anytime you're at a restaurant and your kids start being loud, you may feel the need to apologize to those around you. That's your call, but the fact is, kids are loud. Not all the time, but often they are. Everyone knows kids can be loud, messy, hyper, and plenty of other things. You don't have to apologize when your kids act like kids. Of course, they also shouldn't be running around acting like they own the place. There's natural kid tendencies, and then there's discipline. Both are natural, But if you're doing your part and your kids are acting like kids act, no apology is necessary. All the parents in the room understand and those without kids will get it soon enough. Number four, your thoughts. I'm sorry, but I just think if it needs to be said, don't apologize. If it's hurtful and doesn't need to be said, don't say it. There's really no time when you need to apologize for giving your thoughts if you only give input when it's helpful and constructive. Number five, your ability. Sorry, I can't afford to, or sorry, I can't keep up physically. If you can't afford to do something someone is offering you, that's the end of it, no apology necessary. You're simply being responsible by not doing it. If you can't keep up with someone in the gym or when you're out running, 
that means you're in a different place physically than they are. You're growing, you're getting better. Don't be sorry for that. Number six, your time. Sorry, I can't make it. We all like to say, sorry, I can't make it to your party or event, etc. If you can't make it to something, you don't have to apologize for that. Limiting commitments is a good thing. We probably all need to say no to more than we do. If you can't attend something, you don't need a reason other than the fact that you can't go. There's no need to make up an excuse. We're all limited on time, and we all have the same amount of it. People understand. If they don't, they may not be good for you anyway. And number seven, yourself. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Or, sorry, I am so blank. If you didn't hear someone, it's often not even your fault. If you are a certain way, it's also often not your fault. Maybe you don't like large crowds or going out to the club with people. Whatever it is, you don't have to apologize for it. It's your prerogative. If you don't wanna do it, you don't have to. That's the beauty of being an adult. We all tend to say we are sorry more than necessary and more than we even mean it. Words matter. We should use them intentionally. That being said, it's not always healthy to use that's just the way I am to justify something that shouldn't be that way. This is not an excuse for being irresponsible or lazy. And I've heard this as an excuse for both often. Quote, the attitude of that's just how I am, take it or leave it, is still a sign of immaturity. As an adult, it's your responsibility to figure out which of your traits are toxic and are negatively impactful towards other people and the ones you love, and to eventually learn how to fix them. At some point, we all gotta start making ourselves better individuals. If you truly believe you don't have to change anything about yourself, even at the very least the worst in you, and that people will just have to deal with it, then sorry, you're still a child. Mark Manson. People will say, sorry, I'm late, I'm always late, or... I don't do this or that, insert the thing that they should do. That's just how I am. We justify too much by saying that's just how we are. Don't let that be an excuse. But if you're doing what you should be doing when you should be doing it, there's no need to apologize. We could all apologize less and show more grace to others in these situations. You just listened to the post titled, Seven Things You Should Stop Apologizing For by Kaylin Bruce of freedomsprout.com. Picture a wardrobe upgrade with quality essentials at an unbeatable price. Quince has you covered with timeless pieces that never go out of style. You'll have them in your closet forever. Quince has all the must-haves, like Mongolian cashmere crewneck sweaters from $50, iconic 100% leather jackets, and versatile flow knit activewear. And all Quince items are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. That's because by partnering directly with top factories, Quince cuts out the cost of the middleman and passes the savings on to us. And most importantly, Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. And as for me, I love Quince's versatility too. They have great home items as well as clothes, and I've been really happy with the bedding that I bought from them. When you look at it and you feel the material, you can tell easily that it's of high quality. So indulge in affordable luxury. Go to quince.com slash ORD for free shipping on your order and 365 day returns. That's Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash ORD to get free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash ORD. Thank you to Kalen. Some of these are tough. I try to be polite, so saying things like, ah, sorry, I won't be able to make it, sort of built in me. I get where he's coming from with that, though. I remember a post I narrated from James Clear way back in the day, that was episode 440, where he had a slightly different take. Yes, maybe don't say sorry, but instead, try replacing it. Try saying thank you instead. Like if you're late to a meeting, instead of saying, sorry, I'm late, which is starting on a negative note, you can say, thank you for your patience, which is more positive. And if you wanna justify why, you could. Or another example from this article, instead of, sorry, I can't make it, you could say, thank you for the offer, or thank you for the invite, but I'm busy that day. 
So I like that take. If you have a chance to catch yourself saying sorry, maybe see if a thank you would apply instead. And then you're also making the other person feel appreciated, hopefully, at the same time. That should do it for today. Have a great rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.